Hello again and welcome back to Operations Management. In this session, we're going to spend a little time looking at process flow diagrams. Process flow diagrams are needed because they show us what is actually happening inside the process. First things you need to understand are there are key symbols to a process flow diagram. Activities are always represented by rectangles. Waiting areas, known as buffers, are always represented by triangles. You use arrows to show the direction of the flow from the input to the output. And sometimes you see circles or ovals representing starting and ending. It's very important that you use the correct symbol for the correct activity or buffer or so forth. That way anybody who is looking at your process flow diagram knows what's happening. A second thing that's very important when we deal with process flow diagrams is the concept of precedence. Precedence implies what activity must come immediately before another. What this does is it tells us what activities are required to be completed before another activity can be done. For example, here we have activity C. And if you notice, there are two activities that come right before it preceding activity C. Activity A and activity B. Both of them are needed in order for activity C to start. That's what we mean by precedence. Activities that are preceding other activities. Sometimes you'll see precedence in a table. So here we have four activities A through D and you'll notice there's a precedence listing. Activity A with that dash there shows that nothing has to come before A, but activity B requires A. Activity C, nothing's needed before it, but activity D needs both B and C. So when we look at the diagram, you notice that A and C, which have no preceding activities, are starting it off. B requires A, so there's that arrow coming from A into B. An activity D requires both B and C, so those two arrows come together into D. Let's look at something a little bit uh, more realistic that we can relate to here. Let's say you're going to go paint a door. So in order to paint that door, you need to get the door, you need the paint, and you need to get the brushes. So that would be our first activity. Other things that have to happen, you need to sand the door, you need to clean the door and then dry it. Also, the paint has to be mixed, the brushes have to be prepared, and then, of course, you can paint the door. But if you think about a few things, you can mix the paint without having the door sanded or cleaned yet. You can prepare the brushes without having to mix the paint. So when we look at the precedents, we see that the first activity says, let's get everything together, gather the door, the paint, and the brushes, and nothing comes before that. But in order to sand the door, you had to have had the door in the first place. So activity B, sand door, requires activity A. And if you're going to mix paint, you need the paint as well. So activity E requires A. And if you need to prepare brushes, you have to have the brushes. So activity F requires A. Now, in order to clean the door, you need to sand it first. So activity C, clean door, requires activity B. Once it's cleaned, you have to dry it. So following clean door, activity C is dry door. So you can see the item that precedes dry door is clean door. And when we go to paint the door, we need a dry door, activity D, we need mixed paint, E, and brushes, F. So you can see the precedents all lined up there. So if you want to, stop the video now, try and draw out what that activity flow diagram is going to look like, and see whether it matches what we've got coming up next. Here it is. We started right at the beginning, gather the door, get the paint, and the brushes. From there, we can sand the door, we can mix the paint and prepare the brushes. Following sanding the door, we have clean the door, then drying the door. And then once we have the door 
that's dry and the paint mixed and the prepared brushes, they all come together for the final activity of painting the door. That's it. So when we're thinking about process flow diagrams, what you want to do is make sure you're using the correct symbols and that you're paying attention to the activities themselves. What has to come before something else? Then you show the direction of the flow using arrows. Next time, we're going to be adding times to these activities and going through something called critical path. See you then.